Keir Starmer stood in front of two mm. big union flags. Mm. He spoke about how Attlee uh, initiated NATO, set up mm. our trident, or, or at least our, our initial nuclear mm. deterrent. Mm. Are the public listening? I don't know. I'm not the public. But all, all I can say is that the people I've spoken to, you know, using the old dog and duck test, is that people actually felt that he was a person who was being pretty serious and who was showing that patriotism is, is not the exclusive property of one particular group of people in this country. And that we, we're, we're all patriots in this country in, in various forms. I think that the people will listen to this. But above all, what they will hear is somebody who's actually fairly staid, fairly quiet, fairly sober, fairly serious, mm. who is quite simply saying to the British people, I will not lie to you. That's what it was about. It wasn't a shopping list. It wasn't a wish list. It was a statement of intent. And on that, 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 that level, I think it worked. Indeed, from the Labour left, we've heard a lot of criticism that there hasn't been a lot of policy um, put forward. But I suppose that, that we are halfway through a political term. We might not necessarily expect to see a, a shopping list of policy, as, as, you, as you say there. Um, those values that were set out in, so in terms of uh, security and, and, and trust, and actually prosperity was an interesting one that he mentioned as well. Um, are those going to lead to policy? And, and, and when would you su suggest that well, might yeah. happen? Security, prosperity and respect is mm. what he, uh, with the, the three ones he came up with. And I, I think th those are pretty key ones. But you've got to actually unpack them a little bit. When he talks about security, he's actually talking about the security of health services. He's talking about the security of employment. He's talking about the security of national insurance. He's talking about that sort of security. And when he talks to prosperity, he actually talks about funding and, and assisting to fund you know, small and medium enterprises, the future, and talks about people moving... You know, from sort of to a carbon neutral economy where people can actually make a lot of money out of making things like wind farms instead of you know the, the more uh, dangerous items. So I think it was pretty damned impressive from that. Mm. So the, the question is, and you've absolutely put your finger on it, we're not, not even two years away from the next election. The next election is not due till May, you know, 2024. You do not put all your fruit out on the stall here and now. We don't actually put all your particular options out. Firstly, because we don't know what on earth the world's going to be like. You and I didn't, well, you might, but I certainly didn't know what the world was going to be like two years ago today. Mm. And in two years, who knows where we are? So you don't actually set your stall out now. The other reason why you don't do it is, you know, why give the other side all the ideas and all the ammunition they want? What we would have heard from Keir yesterday, and I think it did resonate, certainly with the government, because the government then brought forward, you know, their press conference, which was most unusual, you know, to try to upstage it. And they brought mm. all the, 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 the hounds of hell out in the papers today trying to destroy it. So I think that simple message that Trust us, we're not going to lie to you. It's going to be a different sort of policy. It's not going to be razzmatazz, it's not going to be slam bang, it's not going to be fireworks. Mm. It's going to be quiet and it's going to be serious and it's going to be sensible and above all, it's going to be respectful.